low mileage lease on Ram 1500 Express Quad Cab 4x2 for $219 a month. Listen up. I'm reworking the menu. Veggies, you're cool. Mayo, corn dogs, you are so out of here. The complete balanced nutrition of great tasting Ensure with 9 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals. And now, with twice as much vitamin D, which up to 90% of people don't get enough of. Oh, the sunshine vitamin. Ensure now has two times more vitamin D to support strong bones. Ensure, take life in. It's your last chance to save during the Toyota Time Memorial Day sales event. Hurry, it all ends Tuesday. Time is running out to get 0% APR for 60 months on Camry or lease for $189 per month. Toyota, let's go places. This Memorial Day, we pay the sales tax on all patio furniture at Amy's Outdoor Living. All right, what a game and what a picture. Steph Curry may have led the Warriors to victory in game one last night, but it's his daughter that kind of stole the show. Just do, uh, you know. Just do well, Daddy. Oh, I know. Hold on one second, okay? Be quiet. <laughs> so he plays well, and obviously he did that for us. Curry brought his daughter, his, uh, Riley, to the post-game news quarter. conference. Other than uh, being adorable and interrupting her dad, uh, she does yawn. It was late, right? Perhaps a little past her bedtime. She looks just like her daddy, though, mm -hmm. huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. If she can shoot like him, uh, WNBA, oh. here we come. No <laughs> doubt. Okay, the Warriors continue in Game 2 of the series. That's tomorrow night against the Houston Rockets at Oracle in Oakland. The game starts at 6 o'clock. It She's reminds me cute. when you uh, go to your kids' performances and, like, half the kids on stage are waving Just at waving. their parents' yeah. as yeah. audience. Just yeah. making sure you can. That's right. Cute. Oh, thanks. That's cute. How much do you trust the cloud? A USA Today survey found it depends on what you use it for. 54% of those polled trust the cloud with electronic and mobile payments. 52% trusted for electronic and personal health trackers. And 40% trust the cloud with computing. Diamonds are a girl, girl's best friend, apparently. But the new Apple Watch could be second. Data firm ana analyzed thousands of tweets, and they found that women like the Apple Watch way more than men do. Women like the fitness app and buying things like coffee with their wrist. <laughs> Another California city is going voluntary vegetarian one week a day. It's commonly called Meatless Monday, and Long Beach City Council supports that change. But as Peter Doubt shows us, not everybody's on board. We have pepperoni, we have sausage. At Buenos Pizzeria in Long Beach. This is chicken fettuccine alfredo. Some of the most popular dishes contain meat. So imagine the eatery surprise after finding out city council voted tonight in favor of Meatless Mondays. It's pretty odd. I mean, there are other things to take care of. The resolution does not make it illegal to eat meat on Mondays and is part of an international campaign urging people to cut down on meat consumption for health and environmental reasons. To take it as an opportunity to choose if they want to try something different on Mondays. Why not give it a shot? Nearly everyone at the meeting showed support for the proclamation, but the most effective speaker... It makes much more sense to urge people to eliminate meat. ...was eight-year-old Genesis Butler. Did you know it takes 2,500 gallons of water to produce a pound of meat? Those against the resolution worried about the impact on local businesses that sell meat. I just don't think that city government really should be in the business of telling people and making proclamations based on preferences. Motion passes. The council voted 7-2 to two in support of Meatless Mondays. Butler says she hopes people will take it seriously. So I'm very happy. Long Beach will now join other Meatless Monday cities, including Los Angeles and San Francisco. Take a look at the White House workout. First Lady Michelle Obama is giving the president a run for his money in her latest Give Me Five video. She's jumping rope, lifting weights, even boxing, while President Obama takes a softer approach, taking a nice light jog with Vice President Joe Biden and then sipping some water. The videos are a part of the First Lady's Let's Move campaign, encouraging a healthier lifestyle. Tony? Okay, a stuffed animal, this is no joke, a stuffed animal caused quite a bit of trouble in Washington State. Police say several people called to report a large tiger on top of an SUV. They thought it was real. The 911 call was from someone who apparently did think it was the real deal. The officer traded jokes and photos with the owner of the stuffed tiger and agreed with the 911 caller saying that thing looked really realistic. But really? Come on. In the Bay Area, CHP says a wrong way driver called 911 complaining that police were chasing him. It all started when officers noticed someone driving a stolen car in the wrong direction. When they tried to pull the man over, he led them on a chase from Concord to Berkeley. And when the suspect got frustrated, he called dispatchers. Okay, all right.
Are you the driver driving the wrong way? Yes, I am. Oh, Lord. The driver ended up crashing into an SUV, sending that driver to the hospital with minor injuries. Now on the CBS 13 News at 5. This is not what you do to try to win people's votes. California's vaccine debate takes a twisted turn. Lobbyists say they're being stalked. Who's doing it and what's being done to stop it? Santa Barbara oil spill. Nine miles of beach blackened. How much damage has been done and who pays to clean up this mess? But first, the local undercover drug agent who tonight is an accused drug dealer. Where he was busted and how investigators say this lawman turned to the dark side of dealing drugs. A veteran sheriff's deputy is in trouble with the law tonight after investigators say they discovered drugs in his home. Good evening, I'm Sam Shane. And I'm Christina Anderson. Authorities made that arrest this week. CBS 13's Nick Jaynes joins us live with more on how they tracked him down. Nick? Sam and Christina, this is a deputy in El Dorado County who was on a drug task force who now himself is accused on drug charges. We are on the way to the home in Douglas County, Nevada, uh, to knock on his door because he has posted bail tonight. Let's show you his mugshot. Uh, he has been with the El Dorado County Sheriff's Office since 2004. Tonight he is on paid administrative leave. His name is Mark Zlendick. Just yesterday, Douglas County Sheriff's officials responded to his home for a 911 call, some sort of domestic dispute, we understand. There, deputies say they found drugs and drug paraphernalia. And so the longtime deputy, who again has been assigned to the South Lake Narcotics Enforcement Team for some time, was arrested. Uh, the female, the woman in the house, has not been identified, but uh, certainly a surprising arrest. He was booked into the Douglas County Jail on a possession of a controlled substance, trafficking meth, as well as other drug-related charges. Uh, we understand, again, that he has posted bail and uh, has been released, so we're going up to a knock on his door in Nevada. If he's talking, you'll see it tonight on the CBS 13 News at 10. All right, Nick, thanks very much. Live for us tonight. We'll see you tonight at 10 with more on that story. The fight for vaccine choice in California schools appears to be getting even dirtier. Tonight, a pro-vaccine lobbyist has gone to the police claiming she is being stalked and threatened. The lobbyist says that Brian Stenser, the president of the California Chiropractic Association, is encouraging vaccine opposers to break the law. Tonight, he claims his words are being misconstrued. CBS 13's Derek Shore is live in the newsroom getting answers about this issue. Derek? Well, Christina, this is the police report filed with the Sacramento Police Department. In it, the lobbyist claims she has been dealing with incidents of stalking and threats of violence, all from people against Senate Bill 277, the bill which would require all children to be vaccinated if they want to attend school in California. Her name is Jody Hicks, a known Sacramento lobbyist, now working hard for the California Medical Association and its fight to pass SB 277. While opposition to the bill has been passionate, Hicks says it has now crossed the line. According to this police report, Hicks claims she has been threatened and stalked by radical opponents of the bill and believes the behavior has been encouraged by this man, California Chiropractic Association president and SB 277 opponent, Dr. Brian Stenzler. We've been opposing this bill since day one. This video shows Stenzler talking to a fellow opponent of the bill about Hicks and her colleagues, seeming to encourage them to follow the lobbyists. But at the same time, following these other two lobbyists and that interaction all day long. All day long. Thank follow you. them to the team. Follow the money, baby. I said, sure, follow them, follow them all the time, whatever you want to do meaning follow the money, and that was taken out of context. Today we spoke to Stenzler via Skype from San Diego. He says his words were misunderstood. We would never, ever conduct ourselves in such a way that we would ever um, condone aggressive behavior, uh, threats, or any, uh, any type of stalking whatsoever. He says he cannot control all opponents or their actions. Hicks has documented opponents taking photos of her, crossing the street, walking into the Capitol. Others saying, quote, the faster we kill these savages, the faster we'll win our freedom back. Stenzler says he denounces these types of comments. Either way, government public relations expert Steve Maviglio tells us extreme tactics will backfire. Well, it's more than a PR blunder. It actually probably is going to hurt their cause. And I should mention tonight that we got a lot of the materials in that story, especially the Twitter pulls from a spokesperson from Hicks, who Hicks herself saying that she just wants to get back to work. 
There's a lot more work to be done, though. SB 277 now heads over to the assembly. This one far from over. Derek Shore, live in the newsroom for us. Derek, thank you. Today, the California Medical Association announced it no longer opposes California's Death with Dignity Act. If passed, Senate Bill 128 would allow a patient with a terminal illness to end his or her own life if the pain and suffering becomes too great. He faces a Senate vote next month. The issue got new attention last fall when California native Brittany Maynard, who had terminal brain cancer moved to Oregon where doctor assisted suicide is legal. The oil spill off the coast of Santa Barbara is growing tonight. The Plains All American Pipeline Company, they own that broken pipeline. They say now an estimated 105,000 gallons of oil spewed down the coastline yesterday. The company says 21,000 gallons made it into the water. Crews from all over California, including those from Sacramento, are in that region to help the cleanup on the stretch of beach 140 miles north of Los Angeles. And today, a state assembly member called for an investigation into the spill. And with that, we go to CBS. 13's Kelly Ryan. She joins us in the newsroom with more on the developing story. Kelly? Well, Sam, Refugio Beach is home to seals, sea lions, and birds. It's popular with surfers and kayakers, but that pristine beach is now dotted with cleanup equipment and crews, including experts from Sacramento. 40 members from the Office of Spill Prevention and Response, part of the California Department of Fish and Game, flew from Sacramento to Santa Barbara this morning. They joined other groups on a mission, Clean the Spill in the ocean, on the beach. They're particularly focused on wildlife. And we know that there's some, some sea otters in the area. You know, there's, uh, there's possibly birds, other marine mammals that could be affected. And uh, if we need to, we're gonna be activating the, uh, what we call the Oiled Wildlife Care Network, you know, to take care of any wildlife that are uh, affected by this. It takes vacuum trucks, water skimmers, absorbent pads and booms to remove the thick, sticky crude oil. Refugio Beach is covered. Officials from the Santa Barbara Fire Department say the spill was reported around 1 p.m. Tuesday after people noticed a strong fuel odor. Plains All-American Pipeline LP owns and operates the ruptured line and released a statement saying it deeply regrets this release has occurred and is making every effort to limit its environmental impact. I'm deeply saddened and angered by uh, the fact that there is a 21,000 gallon and maybe larger oil spill on one of California's most beloved beaches and campgrounds. Assemblymember Doss Williams, who represents Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, say oil companies are supposed to have technology to detect leaks, and he says he's committed to discovering just what went wrong. I plan, as chair of Natural Resources Committee, to hold a hearing um, to ask uh, the oil companies, demand that they provide the public with answers. And with all that mess, there is now a ban on fishing in the area. A spokesperson for the company that owns the pipeline says the company will pay for everything associated with cleaning up the spill. It is a mess indeed. Kelly, thanks very much. And this is not the first oil spill in Santa Barbara. Back in 1969, an estimated 3 million gallons of oil spilled along that same area of coastline. Thousands of birds died along with dolphins and sea lions back then. At the time, it was the largest spill in American history, and it sparked a slew of environmental laws and inspired Earth Day. Well, it's being called the largest consumer recall in U.S. history. Yesterday, the Takata airbag recall expanded to include nearly one in seven cars on the road. There are still a lot of questions swirling around this recall, so what do drivers need to know? We call in Curtis Ming right now with some of the answers for us tonight. Yeah, well, you know, you see these pictures, you hear that people have died, and it might make you a bit nervous driving around, not knowing if you have one of these airbags in your car. But the truth is, we don't know yet exactly which cars have them. It'll take a couple days, even a couple weeks for manufacturers to get that information together, and once they do, they should mail you something, which may not happen for a couple of months. So as soon as that list is together, you could check to see if your car is affected by going to safercar.gov and plugging in your VIN. So let's talk about the backlogs, because I actually own a car that was involved in the initial recall. Mm -hmm. Called the dealership. I said, when do you think you're going to replace it? He said, we'll call you. I said, when? He said, I don't know. I mean, this backlog, yeah. how long could this last? Yeah, there was already a backlog, and we're hearing the 
this backlog could go in uh, on and on for years. There was already a backlog before the number of recalled cars doubled to 34 million yesterday. And uh, we told you last month about Rick Seam of Stockton. He waited for months to get his Honda repaired. And after we got involved, he got his airbag replaced. But authorized dealerships are the only places allowed to make these repairs. Hmm. So should you feel nervous? I mean, you know how it feels. You're driving yeah, around right. in one of these cars with a with the troubled airbag. It's a tough question. I mean, Rick certainly was. And uh, here's what I would do if I was in that situation. I would ask for a loaner car. You might have to be persistent. When we pressed Honda about this last month, the company said it would offer up free loaner cars if parts are not available. Uh, a bill working its way through the capital we've been reporting on would require manufacturers to pay for loaner cars if your car can't be fixed right away. But we should point out, you know, dealerships are frustrated here too yeah. because mm -hmm. they're waiting for these parts to come in from the manufacturer. The manufacturer is waiting for parts to come from Takata. And then the customer is out on the limb. You're sitting there waiting, yeah. waiting for this to happen. What a so can of worms. It's frustrating. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bet. you. A new video may help investigators figure out what went wrong when two men died while base jumping in Yosemite National Park. The video has not been released to the public, but the park's chief of staff says video from a GoPro camera mounted on Dean Potter's head shows him trying to avoid hitting his friend Graham Hunt when he crashed into the side of a cliff. Investigators say the video shows Hunt hitting the rocks a split second before Graham did. The two men jumped from Taft Point on Saturday. They were trying to maneuver through a notch in a ridge line when they died. A six-year-old girl is safe at home tonight after police say her kidnapping sparked an Amber Alert this morning. It started in San Jose and ended peacefully in Stockton. Police found six, the, the six-year-old girl at a home near Tree Swallow Court after spotting the suspect's car. Her mother tells CBS 13 she's very grateful that her daughter wasn't hurt. A lot was going through my mind, um, just her being safe and getting back to her and just everything being okay. Police say Don Atkinson and Maurice Cheadle took the girl. They say Atkinson is Ava's mom's ex-boyfriend. Well, it was one of the most frightening kidnapping cases in Sacramento history. A four-year-old girl taken by a stranger while playing with friends. CBS 13's Tony Lopez has been looking into this case from nearly three decades ago. He joins us live now in our newsroom with more on this one. Tony? You might remember the name Candy Tallarico. If you were around in the late 1980s, you certainly remember her story. If you weren't around... It's a story you won't soon forget. Candy was just four years old in 1988 when she was kidnapped. A stranger pulled up in a car, grabbed her, and then drove off. She was gone for six weeks. Leads led nowhere. She was nowhere to be found because her kidnapper kept her hidden in a tiny crawl space underneath the altar of a local church. So many of our viewers have been wondering whatever happened to Candy. For one man in particular, it's been a burning question. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, geez, I wonder where this, you know, for six weeks, I'm wondering, I wonder where this little girl is, you know, I wonder what's happened to her. And I thought about her a lot, you know, but I never in the world ever thought I'd be involved in it. Yes, there's a big reason Jack Manzer thought about Candy. The actions he took led to her rescue. And tonight at 10, you'll hear more from him, but you'll also hear from Candy Tallarico. We found her. 27 years later, where is she, how is she, and how has she been able to move on with her life? You'll hear her, see what she looks like today, and get the full story tonight at 10 o'clock. Boy, I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I bet she's got a story to tell. Yeah, Holy incredible. smokes. All right, Tony, that sounds very interesting. See you tonight with 10 o'clock with that. All new at 5, a call to stop the push to stop companies from bottling California's water during our drought. And how many have set up shop in this state? Super Bowl 50 is headed to San Francisco next year, and it could be coming back to California soon after that. Which city has become the next contender for the big game? And move over 4G. How much faster 5G will be and when we can expect it? And if you are out and about today, you've seen the clouds. We are looking at hundreds upon hundreds of lightning strikes across Northern California. Will any of that get down to the valley? We'll talk about it coming up next. Imagine that this is your energy bill. Then this is what it would look like after you turn to the experts for an efficient carrier home comfort system from Clark and Rush. Yes, save money every month. Call the smart energy people at Clark and Rush. There is no better time to buy a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz than during the Memorial Day sales event going on now at all three Von Housen dealerships. The values are great. The selection is huge. And because it's a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz, you'll drive home with the unlimited confidence of a one-year unlimited mileage warranty. The selection is online and at Mercedes-Benz of Sacramento, Mercedes-Benz of Eldorado Hills, and Mercedes-Benz of Rockland.
new TLX from Acura. Visit your Northern California Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. My son Xavier suffers from really severe allergies that put him into the emergency room. Well, we waited months to see an allergist. Xavier had to be admitted into the hospital for five days. When we finally did get an appointment, it was 60 miles away. Underfunding Medi-Cal means that Xavier has to wait months for basic care. Tell your legislator you support fully funding Medi-Cal for kids. Take action at MediCalMatters.org. Hi, I'm Dave Rogers, and I'd like to invite you out to Roseville Toyota, Sacramento's number one volume car dealer for the last 20 years. Just listen to what some of our customers have to say. Once I got in here, there was, oh my gosh, so much to see. This is my fourth purchase from Roseville Toyota. I brought six cars here at Roseville Toyota. They have been truly amazing here, and I couldn't be more pleased. If you want to pay more, well, that's your business. But if you want a great deal on a Toyota, that's our business. Don't miss our huge Memorial Day sales event going on now at Roseville Toyota in the Roseville Auto Mall. Imagine that this is your energy bill, and this is what it would look like after you turn to the experts for an efficient carrier home comfort system from Clark and Rush. Yes, save money every month. Call the smart energy people at Clark and Rush. The CBS 13 Mobile Weather Lab, powered by Toyota. Farmers are voluntarily agreeing to make drastic water cuts. Why did they finally agree to do it? New at 6 on the CBS 13 News. Dozens of protesters gathered at Nestle's bottling facility in Sacramento today to demand that the company stop bottling water during the drought. Nestle water, get out of town! Keep our water in the ground! The demonstrators say Nestle is taking water from several sources in the state and selling it for profit under the Arrowhead and Pure Life brands. We're in the middle, middle of one of the most severe droughts we've seen in our state's history. And at the same time, we're hearing that we could be a year away from running out of water. And so this is a very urgent issue. It's a very important issue that's impacting hundreds of thousands of people in California. Nestle Waters Natural Resource Manager Larry Lawrence responded with a statement saying, in part, we've invested in new technologies over the years. We're looking to work with others, agencies, and other environmental groups to help solve problems here. We want to be part of the solution. Now, Nestle's not the only company that bottles and sells California water. Tonight, we're getting answers about the other companies that do that. There are about 100 companies in California. Most use private label operations, 20 of which are registered with the International Bottled Water Association. However, Coca-Cola's Dannon, Arrowhead, Crystal Geyser, Aquafina, Dasani, Glassau are all bottled water from California. The University of California Board of Regents is expected to vote today on whether to endorse Governor Brown's revised budget. The budget plan includes a freeze on undergraduate resident tuition. Now, the regents are also set to vote on whether to authorize UC President Janet Napolitano to move ahead with non-resident tuition increases. Los Angeles may be considered a host city for the Super Bowl in 2020. The LA Times reports the NFL owners heard today from team owners who are backing stadium proposals in both England Wood and Carson. Los Angeles could be a contender if there's a team playing in the market by then, and that team had permission to relocate there. The league will decide the host of the Super Bowl, number 54, next May. This is the last night we will run this story. We are mm. counting down to the end of an era, late night television tonight. CBS will air David Letterman's last show after more than three decades on television. He was the one guy who seemed to be. Um, you know, hearing a different beat. Because of him, the whole culture now has its own top ten list. Whatever he does, there's just no one who does what he does. The stars packed the Ed Sullivan Theater for today's taping. And you can expect Letterman's final episode to include all his top moments through the years from Drew Barrymore's birthday surprise, that surprise gift, <laughs> to his on-air reconciliation with Oprah Winfrey. And remember this, Joaquin Phoenix's bizarre appearance? Uh -huh. Late show host told Jane Polly on CBS Sunday Morning he's just trying to take it all in. Enormous. Even though I've done it for so long, I, I don't ever want to be without a fairly accurate, fairly vivid impression of this experience. 
The details of the final show are being kept under wraps, but longtime band leader Paul Schaefer expects it to be heartfelt. And you can watch Letterman's final episode right here on CBS 13 following our news here at 10. I mean, someone who had the honor and pleasure of being <laughs> yeah. on that program is our very own Dave Bender back in the day. Man, that was a long time ago. Yeah. And I actually, I actually found a tape at home which came directly from the archives of Letterman. A friend of mine was an intern back there and said, you need some fresh tape of this? I said, yeah. Uh -huh. So picture this, 21 years old, and I kind of look like uh, Scott Bayo. <laughs> And here with some of the most talented birds in the world is David Bender. Hi, David. Nice Hi, to see you. This is Yo-Yo, rose-breasted yeah. cock. She's going to come over. Now she's going to come up there. She's going to borrow your money. She's going to bring it back up here. Oh, nice. And then would you like to try it again with maybe a 20 or something? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. no. Put your palm flat out. Flat out. And she's okay. going to send it back to you, all right? Okay. Right back over there. In your hand. Good. Bring it right back up here. Oh, very nice. Yeah. All right. You left it somewhere. I. 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 <laughs> I knew things were going well when he went like this. Yes. <laughs> Did you get a chance to talk to him much, or was that just sort of off limits? Well, well you know what? When he says, uh, I should have showed up to rehearsal, he doesn't show up to rehearsal. Yeah. And that, in fact, we had a... So you're, some, you're, you're only real... Uh, the guy that I hung out with was Biff. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. so I hung out with Biff. Biff stood in for Dave, and then Dave came out, and that's why during that same segment, uh, Dave got bit by a bird, I, uh, which we had at four o'clock <laughs> because Dave didn't come to rehearsal. That'll teach him. <laughs> didn't bother him though because they invited us back in May, oh. and uh, hopefully we'll have some of that uh, video oh, a little later on tonight. Good, All right, good well, stuff. Okay. Thank, Thank you. For that was fun, that. man. Yeah. The end of an era. I mean, it's I incredible. Know. It was 30 years ago for me. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at, of course, what's going on around our era, at least area. Uh, what you can see here: showers and some thunderstorms. We're going to dive on in here at the highest of elevations. It's coming down in the form of just a little bit of a wintry mix. We actually could have a little accumulation up there over the next couple of days. And potentially some rain could spill down into the valley. And I've also done this. Look at all the lightning strikes within about the last six hours. We're talking hundreds upon hundreds of them. Uh, they will start to back down as we head into the evening hours, but still very active weather in the higher elevations. And we're going to do a repeat of this for the next couple of days until we get this low pressure system, this trough to move on out of here. Okay, let's take a look at Alan. He's in Sacramento said, can we have this weather all summer, meaning the comfortable conditions? Dave, can you work on that? We're working on it. How about the temperature from you there, Alan, in Sacramento? Currently 74 degrees. Some other numbers across the area. You can see we're into the 60s, 70s, and 80s out there. So very pleasant conditions and some highs to go along with this from the weather watchers. Williams at 81, Colfax topping out at 75. Let's take a look at our numbers from, of course, the National Weather Service. You can see it's a bit breezy down there. That's Stockton down there toward the northern San Joaquin Valley. And let's see what our numbers are like. And I can tell you it's breezy everywhere. 73 in Sacramento when we should be like 81, 82, 83. Winds are gusting to 23, sustained out of the southwest at 13. Stockton currently 72 with humidity at 42 percent, dew points in the upper 40s. On toward Modesto, we've got 77. Winds are northwest at 14 with a falling barometer. And for Marysville, how about 79 degrees? Winds are southeast at 12 and the barometer is falling at 29. Point eight three. So the trough is just hanging right over the top of us, and it's going to be sticking around for at least the next several days. And little waves like this one right here are going to come down and get into this, and that'll help to spill some stuff back on top of us. So for tomorrow in the Central Valley, we'll have a slight chance of maybe seeing some showers. Same thing as we go on into Saturday. Same thing as we go on into maybe our Friday and maybe early Saturday. And the higher elevations will continue with unsettled weather and snow levels at 8,500 to maybe around 9,000 feet. So we'll just have to see. But most of the weekend's looking pretty pretty good. However, in the high country, depending on how fast that low exits, that's where you'll continue to have unsettled weather in the form of a thunderstorm for your holiday. So keep that in mind if you're doing some camping. Tomorrow, slight chance of showers around, say, Sacramento to the south. You go farther to the north, a better shot of seeing some showers and maybe some thunderstorms. Temperatures there are going to be running into the mid to upper 70s or so. For the gold country, you most likely will have a slight chance of some showers tonight, a chance for some showers, maybe some thunderstorms tomorrow. You get all the way up toward Plumas County. That's where you're going to experience a chance for some showers and thunderstorms. And then when you get near the greater Lake Tahoe area, that's where, again, snow levels could be upwards of 8,500, 9,000 feet. But over the next couple of days, we could get a couple of inches of accumulation. And of course, with some of these thunderstorms like today, you could have some pretty heavy downpours that could be occurring. So keep that in mind. And just a quick shot over toward the west will reveal we will have a chance for seeing a, a little light precipitation there. Most likely only the low 60s around Monterey. Slight chance 
around San Francisco and temperatures there will be kind of on the cool side in the low 60s. Seven day forecast shows you slight chance of something possibly Saturday in the valley. Other than that, Memorial Day weekend and the early part of next week about where we should be with fair skies and low 80s. Curtis. Thank you, Dave. Straight ahead at five going gray on purpose. What's behind the growing trend of granny hair? Survivor finale tonight. I know you're ready for some love. It's the most emotional season finale ever. Let's do this, baby. Woo! Let's go, Jeff. Five castaways remain. I'm ready for a battle. It's every man for himself. Three tribal councils. I dominated socially. I built relationships. Two riveting hours. Did I lie? Of course. Did I max up? Yes. One ultimate survivor. I will fight tooth and nail. This is do or die. Don't miss the Survivor season finale and live reunion show CBS Tonight. If you want the same dresses as department stores at a fraction of the price, you gotta go to Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. NorCal Honda's Memorial Day Race to Save is on. Race in now for supercharged savings. $149 a month on Civic, a Kelly Blue Book Best Buy. $199 on Accord, a car and driver 10 best a record 29 times. From Honda, Kelly Blue Book's best overall brand, three years running. But you better step on it. Our Race to Save event ends Memorial Day. So see your Northern California Honda dealer now. Through Monday, get up to four years interest-free financing or save up to $400 on Beautyrest and Posturepedic. Even get up to four years interest-free financing on Serta Eye Comfort and Tempurpedic. But this special financing offer ends Memorial Day at Sleep Train. When Penn and Teller brought comedy to magic, they created a whole new kind of performance. The Mazda CX-5 brings a newly refined interior and sophisticated technology, together with a performance and efficiency you'd never expect in a CUV. The Mazda CX-5. Grilled sourdough, fresh tomato, and crispy bacon bring the flavor, and sriracha marinated chicken brings the heat. Lucky for this guy, this Swiss cheese doubles as a fire blanket. New sriracha spicy super chicken. Denny's, welcome to America's Diner. Big time discounts, big time selection, and your chance to pick up an extra 1,000 bucks every day in May just by taking a test drive. Now that's big time. Come in during the Memorial Day sales event and drive out a winner with Roseville Auto Mall. Take advantage of huge factory discounts, 0% APR on over 6,000 vehicles from 17 dealers with 24 brands. Talk about selection, talk about savings, plus the $1,000 giveaway every Every day in May, it's big time. Roseville Auto Mall, driven to be the best. Ross has the luggage that'll suit you perfectly. You'll find a huge selection of the top brands at a fraction of what you'd pay elsewhere. Like this ultralight spinner, $130 at department stores. But if you want it for less than $50, you got to go to Ross. Multi-million dollar homes for sale in Northern California. Go inside to see how the other half lives. The kitchens, the bathrooms, theaters, pools, even a two-story closet. Tonight on the CBS 13 News at 10. Then at 11, catch David Letterman's final show. Before we get to the topic of gray granny hair, move over 4G, 5G is on the way. We call on Curtis Ming with when we can expect this faster internet service. Sam already has his gray granny Super hair. Super hip over yeah. here. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was ahead of the times. <laughs> All right, well, going back to this whole 5G thing, it could be years off. We're hearing 2020, but Nokia is working on the network. It's 40 times faster and expected to stream 3D video that is 16 times clearer than HD, clearer than what you're looking at us on right now. Plus, video downloads will take seconds instead of minutes. Seven in 10 Americans say they've received at least one fraud alert on their credit or debit card that was a false alarm. Creditcards.com says you can avoid these alerts by letting your card company know you're traveling or about to buy something pretty big. All right. Granny here. People are going gray and they're doing it on purpose. It's a trend called granny hair. It started with high fashion and now it went up through celebrities have it and now real people are kind of picking up on it. And to get this look, you have to bleach the hair to a pale yellow and then apply gray tint. A study finds men don't use sunscreen as much as women. The CDC found 14% of men regularly use it. Compare that to 30% of women. Now, experts recommend a broad spectrum sunscreen to protect yourself from UVB rays. And here's what we're working on for tonight at 10.
bump from their flight. Then when they try to use the travel vouchers they got for their trouble, they were told they were already used. You've got to be kidding me. I still have the voucher. I've never used it. What you are owed when bumped, and how does the airline explain this? Later tonight only on the CBS 13 News at 10. Have a consumer problem? Go to our website and fill out our form. We'll be right back. Get CBS 13 News in Espanol. Available on your secondary audio program and powered by Xfinity. What sets CBS News apart is experience, integrity, honesty. We are a team here. Just an unbelievably good team. You guys, I think she's here. She's here. Is that her? No, Valerie said she's driving a Buick. That's not a Buick. What kind is it? I don't know. It's nice. Hey, everybody. Surprise. Really? What? The expectation shattering Buick Verona. It doesn't look like a Buick. Now current lessees, switch to Buick and lease this 2015 Verano for around $199 a month with just $199 due at signing. Not leaving town for Memorial Day? Well then celebrate in style at RC Willie's Memorial Day sale. Take advantage of store-wide savings, including TVs and electronics. This sharp 40-inch smart TV is only $349. You'll also save on name brand appliances. Washers are as low as $299, and refrigerators are as low as $399. Plus, this outdoor chair is only $12 with purchase. Don't miss one of our biggest events of the year. RC Willie, your home, your way. There's playing, and there's playing big. There's also plugging in and turning it up till the stacks beg for mercy. Thunder Valley Casino Resort, live out loud. This is amazing. I love this car. Real people are discovering surprising things at Chevy. This is a road trip car. We're sold. It's so pretty. <laughs> They're good looking cars. It feels great. Perfect. This is not what I would expect from a Chevy at all. Get more than you expect for less than you imagined at the Chevy Memorial Day sale. Going on now. Get cash back for 15% of the MSRP on select 2015 models in stock the longest. That's over $3,100 on the Chevy Cruze. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. As we head off to evening news, and Scott Pelley will show you a live picture of the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York. Last Let's show. See it. Potentially deadly airbags must be replaced in millions of American cars. But what should drivers do in the meantime? Also tonight, Bin Laden's bookshelf. Formerly secret documents recovered in the raid reveal his obsession with 9-11 and himself. Tornadoes flatten homes in Texas and Oklahoma. The next threat is flooding. And the stars come out tonight for the end of a television era. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. This is our Western edition. Today, Japan's Takata Corporation said it is stepping up production of airbags to replace the potentially deadly ones in millions of American cars. But with 33 million Americans set to hit the highway for the Memorial Day weekend, many drivers are wondering what they should do. A record 33.8 million vehicles are being recalled for defective airbags, blamed for five deaths and more than 100 injuries. We have more now from Jeff Glore. Consumers have now been warned that many Takata airbags are defective and may deploy with excessive force, rupturing the metal inflator, sending shrapnel flying through the vehicle. But today, car owners are confused because it's still not known exactly which vehicles are being recalled. Eleven car manufacturers are involved, and the companies told us they're still waiting for details from Takata in order to determine the models of their cars, which may have the defective airbags. Well, this is certainly approaching the worst recall situation ever. Sean Kane is the president of the consulting company Safety Research and Strategies. As a consumer, you're between a rock and a hard place. You've got a known safety defect that, if it manifests itself, can cause a very severe injury and yet you can't really do anything about it short of parking your car and, and waiting for the parts availability. 
Takata has said that new airbags will eventually be available, but that wait could be long because there's a shortage of replacement bags and it may take years to replace all the defective units. So who takes priority? People living in humid states first because the company believes the problem is caused by moisture leaking into the sealed canister. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has told car owners to regularly check the safercar.gov website for updates. But since the announcement yesterday, no new information is available. Many are wondering whether they should drive their cars or disable the airbags. Jake Fisher is the director of auto testing at Consumer Reports. It's really important to keep perspective on this. So, I mean, this is a small occurrence. Tens of thousands of these vehicles have saved lives. Takata says it's tested nearly 31,000 airbags and 265 have ruptured. None of the auto safety experts we spoke with today recommend disabling airbags. Scott, they are still more likely to save your life than take it. Jeff, thank you. So while we wait for the manufacturers to identify all of the models being recalled, we do have a list of what we know so far, and you'll find it on our website, cbsnews.com. A beautiful stretch of California coast is coated in oil tonight after a pipeline break near Santa Barbara, and Ben Tracy is there. The oil slick now stretches for nine miles. Containment vessels are trying to stop it from spreading while dozens of hand crews work the beaches bagging up oil-contaminated sand. You can see where it came out of the ground right there. The onshore oil pipeline ruptured Tuesday afternoon, possibly leaking 105,000 gallons of crude. According to its owner, Plains All-American Pipeline, Darren Palmer is its district manager. We're sorry that this accidental release has happened, and we are bringing in all the resources at our disposal to respond. But you can already see the impact. This bird was coated with oil. Two of them. And these two whales nearly swam into contaminated waters. Santa Barbara County District Attorney Joyce Dudley is considering criminal and civil charges against the pipeline company. I don't know if this is a crime scene yet, but as I look across this ocean and I see these rocks covered with tar and oil, it almost feels like blood. Now back in 2010, Plains All-American Pipeline was forced to pay $44 million after 10 oil spills in several different states. And Scott, as for the cleanup on these beaches, they tell us it could take weeks to give you a sense of what they're dealing with. This is what your hand looks like today if you touch the rocks. And we want to point out the broken pipeline has been shut off. Ben, thank you very much. There was more violent weather overnight, and Vicente Arenas is traveling Tornado Alley. More than two dozen tornadoes were reported ripping through parts of Oklahoma and Texas overnight, sending people running for cover. That's the roof, John. One twister touched down near the north Texas town of Runaway Bay, destroying homes. Brad Snodgrass saw a funnel cloud heading straight for him. I actually stepped outside and listened to it and just could hear, hear it swirling. It's like a real deep whistle when it just starts swirling the funnel. It's, it's crazy, crazy loud. Snodgrass and his wife Brandy hid in their neighbor's hallway downstairs. It was insane, like all of, all of the windows came crashing in. The tornado ripped the roof off their building and another nearby. Luckily, no one was injured. Wow, look at that, the debris cloud. The tornadoes are suspected of striking the small resort town of Mineral Wells. The city's main street was blocked by debris. The cluster of storms also flooded homes in the town of Bridgeport. Near San Angelo, the Concho River crested at its highest level in 40 years. This area in Runaway Bay was one of the hardest hit, and Scott, the concern now turns to flooding. There are more thunderstorms in the forecast all the way through Memorial Day. Vicente, thank you. Today, five of the world's biggest banks agreed to plead guilty to felonies and they will pay more than $5 billion in fines. Federal prosecutors called their crimes breathtaking. They include a price fixing scheme to manipulate foreign currency exchanges and a plot to fix interest rates. The fines are among the largest ever. Jeff Pegues has been following this. They called themselves the cartel. Prosecutors say a group of traders at the banks discussed fixing the prices of U.S. dollars and euros in secret online chat rooms. Assistant Attorney General Bill Baer. The dollar-euro spot market is as big as it gets. Every day, about 500 billion worth of dollars and euros are traded in this market. 
According to the Justice Department, the collusion started in 2007 and lasted five years. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says the traders increased their commissions and the bank's bottom line. Their actions inflated the bank's profits while harming countless consumers, investors, and institutions around the globe, from pension funds to major corporations, and including the bank's own customers. Court documents show the brazenness of the traders at Barclays Bank. In 2011, one trader wrote, we trying to manipulate it a bit more in New York now. Another said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Four of the banks pleaded guilty to antitrust violations. In a written statement, Barclays CEO Anthony Jenkins said the people involved have once more brought our company and industry into disrepute. And J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon called the conduct a great disappointment. More than a dozen bank employees have been fired, but the Justice Department has been criticized for not charging individuals in major financial cases, including this one. Prosecutors touted the fact that the banks themselves were charged rather than subsidiaries. But, Scott, because of agreements made with regulators, all the banks will continue to operate normally despite their guilty pleas. More felonies on the rap sheet of Wall Street. Jeff, thanks very much. There is a serious threat to the world's heritage tonight. ISIS has taken the famed Syrian city of Palmyra. The city, mentioned in the Old Testament, is home to priceless ruins. The extremists of ISIS have destroyed monuments elsewhere, declaring them un-Islamic. The fall of Palmyra comes days after ISIS overran the strategic Iraqi city of Ramadi, the capital of a province that more than a thousand Americans died to secure during the U.S. occupation. Today we got some fascinating insight into Osama bin Laden. Secret documents seized at his home by SEAL Team 6 were de declassified. And here's Mark Phillips. Osama bin Laden may not have had a real bookshelf in the Pakistani hideout where he was killed, but he did have an extensive library. He had digitized copies of books, many of them in English, on computer drives, along with thousands of internal al-Qaeda memos, all taking a dark view and many showing a hostile intent toward his sworn American enemy. Some of what he read you might expect to find. The 9-11 Commission final report, whose accuracy he would have been able to judge. Among the files, memos to his followers saying the focus should be on killing and fighting the American people, not attacking Arab regimes. But bin Laden's choice in books was like a window into his worldview. Books like American Strategic Blunders, the hint is in the title, a catalog of where the author thought U.S. policy went